Okay, so welcome to the second session of the Python programming masterclass. Uh, my name is Abu Bakr Sana Ali. I have a PhD in electrical and computer engineering uh, with a specialization in building AI power systems. I am currently a visiting researcher at Khalifa University in the UAE and I've been a full-time lecturer at Bayer University Kano for almost six years now. The host institution is called Asana Toro Services and uh, is based in the UAE. We offer training services, consultancy, as well as research and development. So for those who attend uh, the previous session, I have mentioned that all our workshops, uh, the recorded videos can be made, uh, are available on our YouTube channel. So you can check our YouTube channel, search for Asat Academy, and you should be able to get uh, recordings of the previous sessions. Not only that, you can also visit our web app, okay, our learning portal and register, uh, type asatacademy.ai, and you should be able to register and then you can also get access to our our learning our resources and i will show you that later so the link to the learning portal i've shared it in the chat you can check it out all right so thank you for attending and uh, i welcome you for the second session I hope you will be able to gain some value from the time you will invest during this workshop series. Um, last week, we talked about Python and we set up the environment. We also discussed about numbers and uh, strings. So I don't know if you have managed to get a if you have managed to view or watch the recordings of the last session, uh, yeah, I think I have some. I don't know. Can you hear me? Am I audible enough? Can anyways send your response in the chat and you can also unmute. Yeah, are you speaking because I cannot hear you? Ah, okay, this is your first sitting in. All right. Okay, so I have sent the link. Okay. Uh, yeah. Email. Uh, did you just register? For this event, yes, like yes. Uh, an hour ago, I sent an email about two hours ago with the link to the YouTube video, so that you can just quickly get uh, an idea of what we discussed last week. But anyways, uh, I think we can also build on this. You should also be able okay. to understand some of the concepts we discussed, and for more detailed information you can revisit the video from last week okay so it should be fine uh okay so we'll build on that and uh, i will do my best to explain things uh in a more comprehensive way so that you will not be left behind okay. all right so list what is the python list okay just as the name implies a list is a data collection it's a type of data structure where you have things that belong together okay so we would like to sometimes put many things inside one particular object for example if you have a suitcase inside the suitcase you can have so many things inside the suitcase so same thing happens also if you are writing a program you can have let's say a list called friends that's the list okay it's a list of friends and this list is going to contain the names of your friends for example, you have Joseph, Glenn, 
Sally. Okay, these are your friends, and you have them in a list form. So in Python, this is what we call let's say the variable. The variable is called friends. Okay, and the value that this variable friends is holding is Joseph, Glenn, and Sally. It's a list. Okay, so the variable friends is holding a list of three friends. And uh, when we are writing a list, Python, so square bracket, square bracket. So when you see a square bracket, and then inside the square bracket, you see an item, you know, separated by a comma, this is called a list. So you can have also another list called prime, and this list contains three items, box, chart, and perfume. Okay, so this is a list. So we have two lists here. So some lists are homogeneous, meaning they are talking about the same thing that belong to the same thing, and some lists are not. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, I will come again. So I was talking about a list being a collection of items. Okay. Uh, and when we are writing in Python, we have what we call a variable. A variable is anything. We can consider that as a magic box or your bank account is a variable. Your wallet is a variable because the value it is holding inside can change with time. That's why it is called a variable. So the variable is a name, which we have here, friends, and it is holding this uh, list of four, three friends. That means since it is a variable, we can have the list to be of five friends, and it could have maybe a list of different friends that are not these three. Okay, so that is a list. So we can have another list of numbers. We saw a list of strings there. So these are called strings in Python because we have this quotation marks. So whenever you have quotation marks, you normally write something that you normally write in a plain English. You know, Joseph is a written in English word. So we, we put quotation marks to indicate that this is a string. This is a type of data, a string type of data. We call it a string. But here we have numbers. Okay. Uh, so this is a list of integers. We have 1, 24, and 76. And if you want to get it printed for us in our console, we can just use the print statement and it will print this list of integers 1, 24, and 76. This here is a string. And we can print it out as well. We can see it. This here is a mixture of strings, integer, and a float. So a float is a decimal number. If you have any number that has decimal points, we call that a float. So this is a float. This is an integer. This is a string. So we can print them out. So that means a list can be non-homogeneous or it can be homogeneous. These are all homogeneous. This is homogeneous. This is homogeneous. This is heterogeneous. We have so many things. Okay. Here, this one is a list of a list, you know. So inside this list, there is another list inside it, right? The five and six is a list that is inside the list of one comma. The five and six comes as a list inside this list with a seven. Okay. And we have the empty list. Empty list is where you have only the open and closing square brackets without any element inside. If there is no element, we call this an empty list. So these are all types of lists, okay? Uh, if we want to, for example, access an element in the list, we will maybe give the index. The index indicates the position of that element. For example, we have a, an element called, uh, or a list called bicycles. It is called bicycles. And it has how many elements? Four elements. One, two, three, and four, okay? So if we want to access what is the element that is at position two inside the list called bicycles? What we want to do is to write 
the name of the list, which in this case is bicycles. And then we will write the position, the position of that element. So if we want to, let's say, access this canon del, that is position two. In Python, we normally start counting from zero. So instead of saying position one, that is called index zero. This will be index one, index two, index three. So that means canon del is going to be at index one. Okay, and this, if you print it out within the print statement, it will print for you canon del. Okay, so that's what you will see uh, when you print it out. And remember the title method, we use this title method on a string, right? So if you have a string, let's say string of my name like this, Abu Bakr, okay. I will call this string name as a variable, Abu Bakr Sani, for example. So if I said name dot title, it will return my name in title case, and it will print for me Abu Bakr with the A in caps, then the S also will be in caps. Okay, so that is what this dot title does. So th this is something to remember. If you want to access the list, element you indicate the position which is index we call it an index okay and you put that index inside square bracket preceded by the name of the list and uh, if you want to access the last element in this case specialized is the last element in this list so this is element zero one two three okay so we can say if we want to get access to specialized we can do bicycles Three. And if we print this, we will get specialized. All right. Or we can say bicycles minus one. So minus one will print the last element in the list. Okay. So minus one will print the last element in the list, which will be specialized. So these are some things to note when you are dealing with list and how you can access elements in a list. All right. So coming back to another example, we have our list called bicycles and it comes with three or four different elements, straight, canon del, red line, and specialized, okay? And we want to create a message within the elements of this bicycles list. And this in this case is, now we will use the F string. So when we use the F string, we are trying to make some formatting, okay? So we said message, which is a variable, that means the value message is going to hold, is going to change. We have the F string, okay, notation, this F, you write it down, then you can write anything. So in this case, I said my first bicycle was, so if I just print this without this part, okay, the computer will print that part for me. My first bicycle was a, uh, that's all. But now, because I want to now add something, embed something into this my message, and this value that I want to embed inside is going to be changing, okay? Which is this here. So bicycle zero, what is bicycle zero? Yeah, bicycle zero is what? Track, right? This is the element at the zero element. So at the zero position, or at the zero index. So this will be track. Okay. So what I'm saying is this part here, bicycles will be replaced with track. Next, I said, okay, make it into title case. Okay. Take this track and apply the title method to it. So that means the first letter, which is the T, is going to change to caps. So it will become track. So at the end of the day, the computer will print for me, my first bicycle was a track. If I change this, to, let's see two, <coughs> then that will be position zero, position one, position two. So this is going to be, instead of track, it is going to be what? My first bicycle was a red line. Okay, uh, is that clear? As I said, 
the class is supposed to be interactive so if you have any question please indicate in the chat or you can unmute and ask so that we do not have uh, a lot of things okay before we ask questions so the moment you have any question or you have some concern you can just unmute and you can ask okay it's supposed to be an interactive session before i move on let me know if this is clear all right jeremiah awesome okay all right so i will move to the next slide so this is like uh, using an individual value. So we have a simple activity uh, which we are going to try out. Okay, uh, we have someone who just joined. Uh, I will try to explain things so that they will also be able to uh, also come up to speed. All right, so I will try to explain things uh, a little bit in more detail with the activities. So as usual, I will switch now to my Google Colab, okay? So Google Colab is a Python development environment which I which we use to execute and run our Python code. It is online, okay? Uh, you can easily go there and uh, you can access it for free. So I will move there and I will share it. Okay, finally. All right, so I am signed in. Okay. Um, so if you are signed in, normally it will bring you here. You will see uh, some examples. You will see some recent files which you've created. This will give access to your Google Drive. If you have files in your Google Drive, I have so many of them, uh, as you can see here. So I can open any of my previous ones. This was our previous session. Uh, so you can also create a new notebook, which is what I will do. I will create a new notebook. Yeah, you can see the last session, Kevin. Uh, I have shared it with you. I will share this same one also with all of you. Uh, let me add your Gmail account. Let's see. Yep, there you are. Uh, Jeremiah, can you share your email, your Gmail? I will send you this as well so that you can have access to the same notebook. The idea is as I'm writing, you will have access to this, which you can uh, use later and you can also try this out. Okay. okay. Awesome. Okay. So let's see. Okay. I hope you have received it. Okay. So the first activity is asking us to let me go back to that. Let's quickly just go through the first activity to have a sense of what is expected of us. So the first activity is saying we need to store the names of a few of our friends in a list called names. So we will create a list called names and we will store some names of our friends. And we will want to print each person's name by accessing each element in the list one at a time. Okay, so this is the first activity. So let's start with that. So I will come here and it's always good to start with changing the name. I will change the name to, of the notebook to Python master class session four. 
all right so first activity before this i will maybe make a simple text go to activity one okay all right so we will create a list so we have it like this let's write the names of the friends okay so since friends is going to be strings each one of them is gonna be string okay so we will write let's see bakar we put a comma okay comma and jeremiah okay so that's the first activity and we're supposed to uh, print each one so let's start with the first first name we'll type print and uh we open bracket we will write the name of the list then we will put the position as the index in front of the name like this so this will print the first string which is abu Bakr. okay so all you have to do is click on the play and it will uh do the execution okay so yeah you can see it's printed out i can do the title so that the a will be caps oh sorry i it's a method so if it is a method it has to come with these two brackets in front of the title word so title Aha. so now you can see this is abu Bakr with the first letter capitalized you can print the second one which is going to be an index v index one and it will print it out for us kevin you can print the last one with the two to print jeremiah or we can use the minus one to print the last element and that will be so also jerry maya okay so that's the first activity so the next activity is saying uh start the list okay which we used earlier but now we want to print each person's name and print a message to them okay we want to print a message to each person okay so let me call this activity two okay print a message to each friend that's what you want to do all right so i will write the name message remember the, this since i execute i have executed this cell everything is going to be stored in the in the memory of the uh, computer so everything is in the ram meaning the variable names is still there available for us we can easily access it even from the subsequent cells so here i can easily write a message i will use the f string f then i will open the two quotations i will write yeah hello i will now use the parenthesis so when you have f you can use parenthesis and this parenthesis will whatever will come inside this uh, curly braces it should be a variable our variable here is names okay and let's say i want to talk to kevin i want to tell uh, kevin welcome okay this is what i want to print so i can run this okay now it's saved i can now print message and uh, you will see it's going to be printed hello kevin welcome all right remember we also want to use the title so that it becomes in caps let's see hello kevin you are welcome all right let's change it to let's check with jeremiah okay let's use the minus one hello jeremiah welcome to the python master class okay so this is the second activity aha uh -huh. and the third activity is saying we want to create our own cell so let me write it also activity three
All right. Okay. That's good. Yeah, so remember the F string. I do change. You can see here I was using double quotes. And here I'm using single quote. Just to show you that it actually doesn't really matter. Okay, it doesn't matter that much. But uh, if you know, for example, inside this, you will have some quotation. Let's say I would like to see um, Kevin said. Yeah, this is something that I would like to quote Kevin saying. Here, yeah, then I cannot use a single quotation. I have to use double quotation because outside, I use single quotation outside. So if I use single quotation, and that's why you see here single, and it, it highlighted the first single here. But this one is double. If I highlight it, it shows it here. So this one will work like this. If you run this, you'll see Kevin said, I would like to own a Range Rover. Okay, you can have the double outside. Then inside, anything you want to cut will come in a single. A first drop like this, it will also work interchangeably, no problem. You can see, worked. Okay, so use double or single is up to you. Choose whichever one you prefer, but don't forget the F keyword the f-string and the braces so wherever you see the curly braces that's where you can now put your variable inside okay and the variable here is the last element of the cars list last element of the cars list okay all right okay so this one you will have access to it and uh, the powerpoints also will be made available for you so we can move to the next uh, next slides uh, and then we will also do activities as well okay all right so we have seen how we can access an element okay how we can access an element so the next thing we would like to do is to modify an element inside a list. For example, let's assume we have a list called motorcycles, which has three elements, Honda, Yamaha, and Suzuki, okay? And we would like to print it out. We can use the print motorcycles to print out for us Honda, Yamaha, and Suzuki. However, we might want to change the element inside this motorcycle. So let's say you have a list of motorcycles, but then you swap one of your motorcycles with a frame. Okay, in this case, the first element, which is what Honda, right? That's the first element because we put index zero and we are swapping Honda with Ducati. Okay, we are now using Ducati. So now motorcycles is going to change. The elements will now be Ducati, Yamaha, and Suzuki. That's why when we print it out, you will see Ducati, Yamaha, Suzuki. Okay? So this is how you modify elements inside a list. All right. So we have seen accessing, we have seen what? Modifying. What of adding? Okay, what of adding? We want to add an element inside our list. Okay? So look at this example here. We started this list with empty okay nothing is inside the list that's why we have this it's empty and then we now start to append so this method called append is what we use to add elements inside a list so we said motorcycles dot append honda so honda is now going to be added inside our list then we said motorcycles dot append yamaha so there will be now two elements honda and yamaha and then we do it again, motorcycles.append Suzuki. Now we will have three elements, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki. When we print it out, you can see the output is the three motorcycles. But initially it was empty, but we keep at appending. Now we can also say motorcycles.append Ducati, and then we will be able to have Ducati added, so we will have four elements. Okay, 
So that is the append. So what does the append do? It will be adding elements to the end. So the next one will come here, okay, which will be Yamaha. Then the next one will be added, which will be Suzuki, okay? What if, for example, if I said append again, it will be Ducati. But what if I want to now insert something in between, let's say, Honda and Yamaha, in between, not at the end. I don't want to append at the end. I want to put something inside. Or I want even something to be the first, you know, uh, the first element inside this list. So that's where you use the keyword insert. You use the keyword insert. Okay. So when you use the keyword insert, so you write the name of the list, motorcycles, dot insert. You indicate the position for the insertion and you indicate the element you want to insert. Okay. So we have motorcycles which hold Honda, Yamaha, and Suzuki elements. And we are telling it, I want you to insert in the first position Ducati. So now, motorcycles will be Ducati, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki. If I had done it the way it was before, I used the append, Ducati will have been the last element. But because I used the insert and I indicated this should be inserted in the first position, that's why Ducati now becomes the first element in the list. All right. The next thing is the removing. How do we remove elements from a list? Let's say we have our list of three elements, Honda, Yamaha, and Suzuki, and we want to remove an element inside that list. So here we use a statement. We call it the DEL statement, the DEL statement. We write the name of the list, motorcycles, and then we indicate the position inside bracket, uh, square bracket. So what we are saying here is, this Honda, Yamaha, and Suzuki, we want to remove the first element, okay, which is Honda. So Honda is going to be removed. So we'll be left with Yamaha and Suzuki, as you can see here. Okay, so that is the Dale statement. However, there is another statement. The Dale statement, we have also what we call the pop, okay, the pop. So the pop will remove the last element, okay. So pop. With the del, you can indicate which element you want to remove. But when you use the pop, the, you know, last in, first out. You know, the last element that comes in is going to be the first to remove. Okay, first out. Last in, first out. LIPO, you know. So, now Suzuki is going to be removed from the list. Okay. That's why here we said the last on, which is going to be a variable. We call it last on. And we say motorcycles.pop. Okay, so that means last on is going to be Suzuki. So we can print the last motorcycle I owned was a uh, put in the last on variable. And we now use the title case so that it becomes title because it was lowercase. Now we have Suzuki. All right, so these are two. So the Dell statement. The pop, which will take out the last. Then the last one is called the remove. Okay. Remove statement also removes an element. So look at our motorcycle list. It has four elements. Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, and Ducati. And we what? We want to print motorcycles. It will print this for you. When you use the remove, it will remove an element called too expensive. And here what we said the too expensive is the Ducati. Ducati is the too expensive motorcycle. So we are telling motorcycles remove too expensive. It will check the list and it will remove Ducati for us. So when you print motorcycles, now you will see only these three without Ducati. Okay? But keep in mind, the remove method only removes the first occurrence of the value. Okay? That means if we have two Ducatis, only the first Ducati is going to be removed. The second Ducati will remain. So we have seen three different ways of removing elements from inside a list. By, for adding, we can use two methods. We can use the append, which will add something to the end, or we use the insert, which will put something at a particular position. 
But for removing, we have seen that we can use the del. We indicate the position of the element we want to delete. We can use the pop, which will take out the last element. Or we can use the remove, which will now remove that particular value we want to be removed. All right. So these are the four different ways of handling. Uh, okay. So the first thing we look at is modifying, adding, and removing. Okay. So this is an activity. So the first one is saying, if you could invite anyone, living or deceased, to dinner, who would you like to invite? Make a list that includes at least three people you would like to invite to dinner. Then use your list to print a message to each person inviting them to dinner. Okay. So let's do this. Uh, this one is an easy one, so we can easily do this. Uh, all right. Let me know if this uh, part is clear before we start the exercise. The activity, is this clear? Yes, it's clear. Awesome, awesome. All right. <clears throat> okay, so call this activity two point four. Just okay. okay. Now I call. All right. So it says if you could invite anyone, living or deceased. To dinner, who would you invite? Make a list that includes at least three people you would like to invite to dinner. Okay. So let's say uh, guests. This is my list. I would like to invite uh, uh -huh. so let's put some cartoon characters. Naruto. Okay. Luffy. Goku, Aikama. Okay. All right. So we have four people here who would like to invite to our dinner. Okay. So then use your list to print a message to each person inviting them to the dinner. This one is easy. Okay. You can see a message. We did something like this before. Hi. You can see a gift. For example, zero. Okay, so this is this. Please come to my. Oh, please attend my dinner. Come to that. Okay, and print message. And we will see. Hi, Naruto. Please attend my dinner. I go for the last element with the minus one. I will get high side hammer to this at end my dinner. Okay, yeah, no worries. Plug in the charger. Okay, I will just take my time to write the second one. Okay, so you can see 
Goku has been removed from the list. We are left with only Naruto, Luffy, and Saitama. Okay? So that's... Uh, so we can indicate. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We can, let's say, also try the pop. You can say, okay. Uh, uninvited guest. Let me call it uninvited. Um, yeah. Remember, you cannot use space, but I can use underscore to separate words. So uninvited guest is guest dot pop. Okay. So now I can print on invited guest. Let's see who is this person. Okay. Aha, Saitama. Saitama was the last one. Here, which was the last one. Yeah, Saitama. So now uninvited guest is Saitama. Okay. Or oh, we can use the remove. Okay. We can use guest dot remove. Can now update. Let's say oh. an invited guest is a root. Okay, guest dot move on invited guest. Okay, so we can print guests. See, aha, okay, this on invited guest. Good. Okay, Luffy, what have you? <laughs> Naruto has been removed. We are left with Luffy, Goku, and Saitama. Okay? Uh -huh. So we can write maybe a message here. Sorry. Sorry that we couldn't make it. Since I'm going to use this, then I will have to use the double apostrophe. message hmm. and print in something print the new guest here yeah, let's add a new guest the variable let's call him uh, Corner, yeah, detective corner. Okay, but the new guest is we put you don't forget the F new guest. Let me the title so that it becomes tabs. Anything with here too, I put the title. Style. Okay, so the new guest is Conan and uh, the update. So let's add this new guest to our guest. So, guest is going to be you can use the dot append new guest. 
Okay, so let's print this and see what happens. Did I miss something? Oh, X is not in the list. Okay, let's put it back because when I run it earlier, it removed Naruto already. So I need to run the previous one. So in fact, it's better to even print the get list initially. So I can say uh, print initial guest list is print guest. All right. All right. So initial guest list is you have Naruto, Luffy, Goku, and Saitama. This was our initial guest list. Okay. Then Naruto was uninvited. So we said sorry you, that you couldn't make it Naruto. Okay, you can see uninvited guest the title. Alright, so we print this message. That's what printing this for us. Alright, we have now guest dot remove. Now we will remove that uninvited guest, which is okay. So even here, okay, we remove which is Naruto. So now Naruto has been removed from the list. We are left with going to be with Luffy, Goku, and Saitama. Alright. So we have our new guest called Conan. Alright. So we printed it. The new guest is Conan, which is this guy. Then we said guest.append new guest. So and then we print guest. So this is it. Luffy, which is this one, Goku Saitama. You can see the first three. And then the Conan, which we just added. We appended it. Okay. So that's the uh, we can even use an extreme here to make it even more thin. Okay. Thin. All right. So this is the updated guest list. Okay, so I will write the last one, uh, the activity for you to give it a try, uh, maybe during your free time. This is the next activity. It will be easier. That's way. So you just found a bigger table and you have more space now. You want to bring in three more guests. Okay. Uh, they have already indicated what you should use. Actually making it life a lot easier. You can make this into a chord. This. So. Okay. So use insert to add new guests to the beginning of the list. Uh, of your list. Use insert. To add one guest in the middle and then at the end of the list we use a pen to do that then print the new set of invitation messages one for each person in the list okay so this should be easy all right so i will leave you to try this and uh, i will maybe check it out later uh, and give you my own feedback all right, uh, take it right out at your convenience. And then before the next class, I will check it out and we'll send you feedback. All right, is that okay?
okay so we have seen how to create a list all right Kevin so no worries just work on it and I will check it out and provide you with my feedback okay so we have seen how to create a list how to modify access element of the list within the index how to modify a particular element within the list we've also seen how to add to a list as well as how to what how to remove from a list so the four things you normally do to a database right read the right delete modify and uh, yeah so the four things crude operations okay so now we want to sort a list we have a list and we want to sort it okay uh, maybe you want to sort it alphabetically uh, or in increase in order or decrease in order okay that's what we want to do and we have the sort method to help us do that okay so let's assume we have a list of cars task focus bmw audi toyota and subaru and we want to sort this and what we do we will just say cars dot sort okay if we do cars dot sort it will sort them alphabetically okay it will sort them alphabetically however if we want to do it in the reverse we can use the reverse parameter and we can set it to true value okay reverse equals to true and then our sorting will be done but in the reverse way starting with the last element which will be toyota right subaru bmw then audi and this is what is going to be printed for us okay but keep in mind when you use this sort your list is going to change permanently it's going to change permanently so the card is going to change permanently you cannot access the previous order okay the previous way task was initially created you cannot have access to that you cannot go back okay so that's something to have in mind however if you want to maintain the original order okay but you want to just present that list in a sorted order so that people can easily see the list in a sorted manner in a sorted fashion you can now use the sorted function so sort is permanent sorted is temporary so we have the cast all right we can see here is the original list print cast which it prints for us here is the sorted list so we use sorted and then we pass the list inside we pass the list inside okay so this is the difference in the sort we call the function we call the method okay this is called a list method we call it on the car so it's cat dot sort but here you said sorted and you throw in task for this sorted and then you can see it will sort it out and you can print cat again you can see the original task the way it was originally ordered is printed for us here so this is the difference okay or like here once you sort it using the task dot sort the whole order will change permanently but if you just want to sort your list you can use the sorted and you pass the list you want to get sorted all right so there are some additional list elements and this is one of the most important list elements which you're going to be using and it's called the lane function the lane function okay the lane function is important because sometimes you will want to know how many elements are there in a particular list in that list how many elements are there and that's where you use the lane for example you have cars all right jeremiah uh remember i will send the recording okay i will send the recording for you you can watch it later on for well, the remaining parts of the uh of the class which you will miss okay and uh, the activities too will be provided so bye see you okay so as i said you have this list of cars and you want to know how many elements are inside this list so you can use the lane and you pass cars inside it 
So you can see if you do this, you will see four. So that are four elements: BMW, Audi, Toyota, and Subaru. Four of them. Okay. The reverse. Okay. Reverse is the order of it. Just like the sort. Okay. It's like also the sort. But in reverse, we are not making things in the alphabetical order or in increasing or decreasing fashion. Here, what we are doing is just to like flip our list. Okay, like we are flipping the list. For example, the first list comes with BMW, Audi, Toyota, Subaru. So if we flip it, Subaru will come first, Toyota next, then Audi, and lastly, BMW. And that's what the cast dot reverse does, which is exactly what I explained here. So these are two additional list methods which you can also use when you are working with a Python list. Okay, so len and reverse. Okay, so this is a very, very nice example for you to test out these things. Uh, it's also asking you to use the sorted, to use the reverse, and to use the sort. Okay, we have a dinner guest. The same thing with what we worked on previously. And we would like to use the len, L-E-N, to print a message indicating the number of people we are inviting to the dinner. Okay, and then there is another function called the every function. Okay, uh, so we would like to create a list that contains so many items in this chapter, which you have seen uh, so far. But let's try some of this in Cola. Let me know if this is clear. You know, there are four methods here we discussed. Sort, sorted, learn, and reverse. I believe... It should be pretty clear. All right, so let's just do a simple one. Okay, so let's print our guest. Now, let's see how many we have. Okay, we have four elements, right? So let's do print. The total number of guests is can now pass len guests. Okay. Yes, then. So the total number of guests is four. All right. Nice. Okay. So Let's also try the sorted thing. The we don't want to change, so I will use this sorted get list is. Okay, sorted. Yes. Okay, let's bring this. Okay, so you see Conan comes, Goku, Luffy, then Saitama. Sorted. And we can flip it using the reverse. Yeah, the problem is once I did, I do this, this is permanent. The reverse is also permanent. Okay. So if you print get again, it becomes permanent. That change. The last one will become first. Okay. Did I miss this? Still.
Oh. Oke. Okay. So it's printing on this is prime let's move this Okay. Conan Goku Saitama was original. Was Luffy Goku Saitama Conan. Okay. So the sorting had worked actually. So if you do the dot sort, it will work, and you can print yes again, and it will show you the sorted one. Let's see, which is this. Okay, let's do uh, the sort reverse. And let's bring this to true. Okay. Aha, yeah. So now Saitama, Luffy, Goku, Conan is the last one. Okay. So let's try reverse. And just bring yes so it has to reverse it that's good okay so these are the methods you can try okay so the activity is also there um, you will have this for you to try okay let's move to the next one this is easy it's all about index error okay so what it's, it's saying here is Let's say you have motorcycles, Honda, Yamaha, and Suzuki, okay? And then you call an element, which is in the number three position, right? So remember, this is at zero, index zero. This is at index one. This is at index two. There is no element at index three. So if you try to access motorcycles three, you will come up across what we call a trace back. Okay, and this will tell you there is an error. Normally, if you read the last the last line in the trace back, you will see the type of error you have. In this case, it's called index error. Okay, and it told you explanation of it, the list index out of range. So that means three is out of range. And that's because we have only zero, one, and two. That tree is not there inside the list. So whenever you see this, this is how you address it. Okay. Uh, clear. All right. So we are now going to do a little bit more complex part of this uh, activity. Okay, no, no, I can just go a little bit back uh, to explain it. So what we are saying is, look at this, okay? Um, this is our original list, Honda, Yamaha, and Suzuki, okay? We have three elements, we have three elements. But then we are trying to accept the element that is at position four. Remember, Python starts counting at zero, then one, two, and so on, right? In this case, Honda is at position zero. Yamaha is at position one, and Suzuki is at position two. So what is the element at position three? There is no element. The list has does not have that value, okay? So because it is not available, that's why you will get what we call an index error. That's the first error you, you will see that it will tell you, yeah, what you are asking for is out of range. Okay, the compiler will raise this type of error. Uh, is that clear? 
Okay. So if you want to avoid it, try to just, if you want to access the last element, okay, remember you can just use the minus one. So if, in case if you can't keep track of the number of elements and you want, just want to access the last element in the list, you can just use minus one and it will give you the last element. All right. So the next thing we would like to look at is how you go and iterate over a list. Okay, you have a list of magicians. Alice, David, and Carolina, okay? And we want to maybe do some functionality over each one of these. So in this case, we can use what we call the for loop, the for loop. So what we do is to write the statement for, okay? Then we write maybe the name here, magician, the, sim the singular term. Then we write the in statement, you know, the for magician in the list called magicians print that particular magician. Okay. So we will be printing each magician one at a time, starting with Alice, then David, then Carolina. Okay. Why do we want to do a for loop? Because if I want to print out the three of them, without doing the follow, what will I do? I will be writing, let's say, print magician zero, you know, print magician one, print magician two, because there are three of them, right? And this will print all the magicians for me, the three of them. But Think about it. What if I have 100 magicians? How long will it take me to write all these statements, to type it out? How long do you think this will take? I'm sure it will take, you know, an hour maybe or so. What if it is a thousand? What if you have one million magicians? How long will it take for you to write out each element, you know, the name of each of the magicians? But once you have the whole look, as we have here, you can just do what? You can just use it. Just put four magician in magicians, print magician, and you are good to go. Even if there are one million magicians in the list, they are going to be printed out in a matter of few microseconds. You know, that's how fast the computer is. So this will handle that for you. Okay. Clear? Awesome. All right. So, if you want to do more work within a for, uh, a for loop, for example, we have our magician. We just we are not only concerned about writing the names. We just want to even add more stuff. You know, you can do with that f string you know f magician dot title so we want to make sure each magician is going to be printed with the first letter of purchase then we said okay that was a great trick so we have alice that was a great trick david that was a great trick and so on all right and we have another message saying i can't wait to see your next trick alice david or carolina for example here we have Alice, that was a great trick. I can't wait to see your next trick, Alice. David, that was a great trick. I can't wait to see your next trick, David. And so on. So imagine if the magicians are 50, 100, 1000, 1 million, you know? With the full loop, your life will be made a lot easier. You allow the computers to go over it again and again. And this is one of the power of computers. They have the power of iteration very fast all right this is also doing a little bit more uh what we are doing here is if you look at the indentation level okay this is important whatever you want to be looping over you should be indented within the follow okay look at this indentation level so these guys are in the same level but these guys are inside you know you have like a tab okay so that means 
whatever comes after mag magician and the next one is the same incantation level so python will be executing each one of them separately but once you have this you have two statements this one and this one all of them inside this coming after this four magician and magicians so that means these two elements this one and this one okay that means they are going to be the iterated they are going to be looked over and over and over until we reach the end of the number of magicians however the last one the last print is going to be only executed once okay we're not going to iterate over it because we have exit exited you know we are no longer inside the for loop block we are not inside the block we are outside the block so this one is not going to be also looked over you're not going to look this one over because it's not inside so that, like the output here you can see we have three of them alice that was a great trick i can't wait to see your next trick alice david that was a great trick can't wait to see your next trick david carolina that was a great trick i can't wait to see your next trick carolina and then we say thank you everyone that was a great magic show at the end of the loop okay so this is uh, doing something after the for loop right so if you have something you want to do after a loop then make sure you remove the indentation level so that the one will come under the same indentation level with the whole statement okay all right so indentation is important normally python makes sure you have things indented if you do not have your code well indented okay you might have an error for example here once you have these two okay once you have the column python already expects the next line to be indented inside to indicate that this this blocks six lines belong to the four block okay so if you miss this indentation python will raise an error it will complain i'm missing an indentation level but the good thing is the ide collab and other ides the moment they realize that you have typed this full statement and uh, you have the colon and you press enter to go down to the next line they will make the indentation level for you automatically so you don't have to be the one to be doing it but in the event that you, it doesn't do it for you use the tab only one time uh, and the idea is to have like four spaces okay like four spaces for the indentation level okay so let's look at this simple activity okay so the first one is pizzas so we want to have three kinds of pizzas okay we want to create a list called pizza and uh, we would like to use a for loop to print the name of each pizza we would like to modify the loops uh, to print a sentence using the name of the pizza instead of printing just the name for each pizza you should have one line of code containing a simple statement like i like pepperoni pizza we will add a line at the end of the program outside the for loop that states how much we like pizza and the output should consist of three or more lines about the kinds of pizza you like and then an additional sentence such as i really love pizza okay so i will call this activity we'll call it 2.7 lost count pizza <laughs> okay all right so we will create a list called pizzas okay it will hold three values 
Okay, we have pepperoni. Okay, uh, which other one? Uh, a pepperoni pizza, for example, we have vegetables. What do they call it? I forget, I not call it like this. Okay, okay, so we want to have a, uh, a follow. Okay, so I will say for pizza and pizzas. Okay, I put the colon. Now, if I press enter, you see it has created the indentation level for me automatically. So I will just say print pizza. Okay, so I can run this code. You see, pepperoni, chicken, vegetables. Okay, this is an example. So they're asking me to write some few things, not just the name of the pizza. So I would like to write some few things. Okay, let me copy this. Create a new cell. So let's see. Okay, I love. Okay. So let's print it out. Aha, I love pepperoni. I love chicken. I love vegetables. And what are you? Okay. Even add the word pizza. Okay, so let's copy this. The last thing it asks us to do is to have something outside that says, I need the pizza. Okay, but let's even do the title here. Okay. You see, I really love pizza. Okay. You can do backslash n to have that space before these guys. Okay, I really love pizza. So this backslash n has created this white space between the ones of k. Okay. Alright, is that clear? Yeah, clear. Okay, but fail to print without error. Okay, can you share your screen? Try to share. Ah, uh, you put pint, P-I-N-T. That's why it told you name error. The name pint is not defined. It's print, yeah? You are missing the R. Yeah, you see it? Yes, you are missing the R in the print. All right. So once you put the R, it should work. Okay, you have another error. So look at your uh, apostrophe. The first one you use single apostrophe. The second one you use double apostrophe. You know, so be consistent. And then you will not have this error. Awesome. Okay, so we are actually in the last part of the class. So this is going to be the last thing, I believe so.
All right. So lit. Okay. Uh, numerical list. So we have seen how we can have a list that contains strings, right? Pizza, what we had was containing strings. Go to let me share my screen. Okay, so you have many reasons to know. For example, what we had previously is a list of strings. Pizza is a string, you know, list. What if we want to hold numbers, you know? And this is something you do for, you know, you no know, visualizations, you know, sets of numbers, temperatures, distance, population size, latitude, longitude, all this. All these are lists of numbers, okay? So... One thing we do normally is to use the range, the range method, the range method, okay? So when you use the range, this method, this thing called range in uh, in Python, it will print a list of numbers for you, okay? So we have, let's say, for example, even numbers, which is a variable called even numbers, and we say it is going to be a list, okay? So we indicate it is going to be a list and we say it's going to be a range of numbers starting from 2, ending at 11 with a steps of 2. Okay, that's what we are saying. Start, stop, step. Okay, start at 2, stop at 11 with a step of 2. So that means it is going to be 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10 just as you see it here 2 4 6 8 and 10 okay so that's uh that's what range can do for you if you have only two numbers without the last number so that will be just the start and the stop if the last number is not added then you do not have the step so by default the step is one okay so if I put 2, 11, that's all. Then it will start with 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The last number also is not going to be included. So 11 is going to be excluded, but it will start from 2. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? If I do not put the step. All right? And we can also do a loop with this range. And that's what you see here. For value a range 1 to 5, print value. So we were printing 1, 2, 3, 4. Remember, the last number is not going to be in the list. So 4 was not printed. 5 was not printed, not 4, sorry. Okay, makes sense? All right, so we have also the mean, max, and sum, okay? These are some methods. So if, you are, if your list is containing numbers, you can find the minimum value inside the list. And in this case, our minimum value is zero. So when we do the mean of digits, we get zero. You can also get the maximum, the max, okay? Using the max, and you can also get the sum. You sum up everything using the sum. So mean, max, sum. It will provide a sum for you. Okay? So this is a simple statistics which you use a list to get. And this is a very nice activity. Okay? So we're not going to do this because it's uh, going to be easy. Uh, counting numbers within the for loop, we'll just say for value in range or for num in range 1 to 20, and we want 20 to be included, therefore we will put 1, 21, okay? And this will do it for us. Is that clear? Awesome. So, 
slicing a list. So how do you slice a list? Okay. So when you have a list, when we say slicing, we mean we want to get some portion of the list. We don't want to get the whole list. Okay. We only want a portion of that list. For example, we have list of players, Charles, Martina, Michael, Florence, and Elan. And we just want to get the first three. Okay. The first three guys, Charles, Martina, Michael. Okay. So what do we do? We will put the first index of the first element we want to get and then the index of the last element. Okay. So the first element here is what? Zero. So everything between zero, uh, uh, any element that is in the first index up to the element that is at the last or third index are going to be returned back for us, are going to be printed out. And that's where you with the column. So once you see zero to three, what it will do is saying, okay, this is element zero. Martina is one, Michael is two, Florence is three. Ah, three is not going to be included. Therefore, I will only have Charles, Martina, and Michael. And that's what you have here. If I put one here, okay, if I put one, for example, instead of zero, so what will happen is it is going to escape, skip Charles. It will start from Martina. You will see, okay, Martina is one, Michael is two. Florence is three. Okay, we're not going to three, so we will just print Martina and Michael. Okay, this will be only these two guys. And if you only have the colon and then you have the last index, nothing with this initial one, then we are saying start from the beginning. That's the default. The default is zero. So start from zero. That's what this means. That's why here we start all the way from Charles up to Florence because only the fourth up to the fourth. So we have four of them. Okay. And lastly, when you have the negative three up to the end, okay, what do you expect this will be? Mm, this is a pop question. <laughs> what do you expect we're going to get at the output? Yeah, so we're going to get the last three elements, right? Exactly. Go from the last, the robot version. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So looping through a slice, okay? We have our list of players. Uh, we say here are the first three players in the team. And we say for player and players, normally that's what we did before for player and players, print player. But here, we don't want to print all the players. We only want to get the first three guys. That's why here we put, no, we can put zero if you want. You can put zero to three, or you can just use the short form. Just put column to three, you know, and this will handle everything for you. Copying a list. Okay, this is also a very good uh, method. If sometimes you want to copy a particular list. So you have a list called my foods and you want to create a copy of this my foods list so what do you do you say friend foods this is another variable so for example abu Bakr's food kevin's food okay uh, abu Bakr's food is equal to kevin's food so if you just say abu Bakr's food equal to kevin's food it will not work unless if you put all this uh, the column so this will copy everything inside my food and put it inside the friend's food also Okay, so that's how you do this. And that's why you say my favorite foods are, I print out my foods and my friend's favorite foods are friend foods. And everything looks exactly the same because we use this. All right. So we've come to the end of this. Uh, and these are some activities. We will do one. Okay. And then we will summarize what you've learned so far in this uh, workshop today and we will call it a day okay is this part clear about slicing how you pick some portion of a list and use it for yourself not all the list
Awesome. Okay, so let me add another one. Let's call this activity 3.8, for example, like this. Okay, so this is asking us to use one of the programs which we created, uh, add several lines, and what have you, and then we want to print the first three items in the list. Okay, so let me copy my Yes. Okay. You copy it. Right. In fact, let me add one this corner. Okay. So what we can do here, we want to let's say print get uh -huh. let's do zero to two. Okay, so let's do the first two of them. Oh. Yeah, so you can see Naruto and Luffy only. Okay. Awesome. Um, We can do maybe two to the last one, to the minus one. Aha. Uh -huh. So from this one up to the last one, which is the one that is at index 2. So this is index 0, index 1, index 2, index 3, and this is the last one, corner, right? So it was not added. Okay. So what if I do 3 to the end without minus 1? Okay. So you can see this is at index 3, and this is the last one. Okay. Saitama to corner. So this is gliding. Okay. So let's even do a for loop. For guest, let me even bring something. These are the first three guests that attended my dinner. Okay, these guys came very early. You know? Maybe I want to give them a gift. So forget, forget, okay. Was three guys bring thank you let me write the name of the get the title will be in Ali okay do this can see these are the first three guests that attended my dinner Thank you, Naruto, for being Ali. Thank you, Luffy, for being Ali. Thank you, Goku, for being Ali. Okay. Is that clear? Awesome. All right. So, to summarize what we've learned today. Okay. We look at the list, how to create a list, how to access elements in the list, how to add elements to the list within the append insert methods, how to remove elements from the list within the del statement pop method and the remove method, how to sort elements in a list within the sort and the sorted, sort is permanent, sorted is temporary, the more list methods include the reverse which flips the list for us the lane which re returns the number of elements in that list okay so we have seen all this and we have seen how we can also work with what we call numerical lists okay how we can do all that and uh, we have also seen how we can slice between a list all right so this is the end of today's workshop and as usual, if you want to access the resources of the workshop and the recording of the workshop, 
you can go to our YouTube channel, Asat Academy. You can also visit our learning platform, satacademy.ai. Okay, and uh, you should be able to have access to the recordings. I believe uh, you go there now. So YouTube, we have already uploaded the last recording of the last uh, session. Uh, and uh, the app too, once you sign into the learning platform, you can go to events or rec and uh, these are the events that are currently ongoing. These are our past events. So the currently ongoing event this is the python which we are doing python uh, programming masterclass so when you click here you will see the list of the recordings okay uh, we have re we are yet to upload them and uh, this you will be able to see them by the end of uh, maybe today or tomorrow but just to, as uh, an indication okay oh, what's this self -based. Uh -huh. so, somebody played with this. Okay. <laughs> Let me create a new account. I don't need a new account. Just open my account. Yeah, the other one is free. Okay. This one. Uh, This one is under development. That's why it's, uh, it requires access code for you to access it. I will go to begin lesson. So normally, if once we upload, this is what you will see. Okay, you will see Python masterclass. You will see the sessions. So once you click a session, it will open up for you, and uh, the recordings you can watch them also directly from the app, or you can download the resources. So all the slides, okay, will be provided. You can just click here and you can download the resources, and you can save it your computer so that you can also use the slides as a reference okay but anyways i will send it to you, you the previous ones and this one as well i will send it to you in the chat okay at least you can have it before we upload uh, the one no i think it is it is our session right but i will check to make sure whether it is our session or not Okay, I will check. Uh, that was surprise. <laughs> I will check. I will ask the one who uploaded it whether he uploaded the right.
Okay. So you can check the chart. I sent you the lecture slides of the previous ones. Okay, the links for the recordings. Okay, I will send it to you as well. This is for last session, um, the chart. Okay, so once the recording of this session also is completed um, and compiled, it will be uploaded to YouTube also within 24 hours, 48 hours, so 48 hours. Okay, so I have shared everything in the slide in the chat, both the lecture notes of the previous session and today's session, as well as the YouTube link to the recording of the last session. Hope you got all that. All right, so okay for today's uh, YouTube, uh, okay for maybe wait for the next two to four hours, okay? Because uh, after the after the meeting, it takes a while to finish compiling before I can upload, okay? So give it like say twenty four hours before you can get it. All right, it will be in the same channel, the same YouTube channel. You can get it from there. Okay, then thank you for your time. And uh, it's been almost two hours now. Yeah, actually two hours. All right, thank you. And uh, I hope you got value from the time you invested. Not easy. All right, Kevin, hope to see you in the next session. Yes, please do that before the next session. All right. All right. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, see you next week. Bye.